Okay, so welcome to our next video for Comp 3218, Game Design and Development at the University of Southampton. Uh, my name is Dave Millard, I'm one of the lecturers on the course, and I am here with... Max Heyman, I'm one of the demonstrators on the course. And I'm Tom Blount, I am another lecturer on the course. Uh, brilliant, okay, so we've got a, a, a good number of games to have a look at um, in this session. Uh, before we get going, Tom, do you want to say a little bit about what we asked the students to do? So this was the third and final coursework of the module. For this one, we were looking at innovation in game design. So we asked the students to make yet another small game prototype, this time looking at one of the innovations of either procedurally generated content, uh, some sort of adaptivity in their game, a location aware system, or some sort of innovative uh, hardware. Brilliant, okay. So let's uh, get going and have a look at our first game. So this one, I think, is called Police chase. So I'm guessing by the fact there's level five difficulty five to start with that it's a adaptive, dif yeah. dif difficult game. Um, oh. Whilst to move, speed up is E. Bomb is space. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, let's let's get going and see how it goes. New game. Ooh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so we got some nice Yeah, that's a that's a that's a siren noise. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out. Um, oh, that's me done. Okay. You, oh, so, that's interesting. So they give you the option of starting on the same difficulty, or because yeah, of, because of your stellar performance. Because of my amazing performance. Actually, so that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, I quite like that. Um, just just opening it up as an option. So do you have oh, so I, I, I loads of weapons already? So I'm trying to figure out what the... It was definitely space to drop a bomb, right? And E for speed up. Perhaps now you've got the speed up, because you picked up on the other ones to bomb, the red one. Yeah, so, yeah. The, so that isn't too good. So let's try... So if I try and get that bomb... Ugh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> so they hit each other then, right? So, so you miss with the bomb, but they still crashed into each other anyway. Oh, so you can stack up the power. So I quite like that. Oop. Oh, you lose a loop. No, I, I just hit the speed up. So there's... Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's finding my level. Right, here we go. Interesting. So you actually, so even though it's sort of hidden from you, you actually get a, a sort of a hidden extra life. Yeah, I just saw that. Yes. Flat. So yeah, you do get one sort of chance to sort of yes. help engage your difficulty, I guess. So you get that little flashing thing going on. So it's interesting that that's sort of not explicitly mentioned in the in the, um, in the interface or anything. Because it feels like that could be very easily sort of adapted into like you know, yeah. the power up system and the difficulty level, so you can sort of gain extra lives as you go. Because one of the one of the things they mentioned was they they had to think quite hard about how to actually measure skill in the game because yes. obviously you're either dead or you're not dead. Yeah. So they sort of used uh, an average. Wow, you're level five. Of, uh, ooh, yeah, I'm getting better. Level five. Uh, so they were looking at. Uh, yeah, so the average really? time taken. It's actually, oh, it's kind of fun, isn't it? So, oh, I hit those as well. Yeah. So yeah. they are they are obstacles. Oh, level two. I've uh, I've disgraced myself. So what happens if you go out of the red zone? You just immediately. There is a wall just beyond that. I think. Okay, so the red line is sort of more a warning. Yeah, which I also kind of like actually. Um, I do wish there was a bit more of a texture on the ground. Yeah. It's it's quite hard to see the motion. Or a couple more like obstacles. Just, just something, yeah, to give that yeah. perception of movement. There's some nice touches though. I think when the when the police are off screen there's a little police icon that appears around the edge. Yeah. That shows you where they are, that's kinda nice. Um, the controls are, are pretty responsive actually. And and it and there is something kind of satisfying about blowing up cars. About blowing up cars. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've not been using the speed up very much. I think it's difficult to tell really. Ah, oh, okay, when you're at the edge, it's sort of quite obvious the effect it has, but like you said, it's, yeah. it's actually quite difficult <laughs> to tell if it's had any impact. Yeah. So, 
as sort of infuriating as that siren gets, it is actually a useful. Yeah. It's a useful tool to tell oh. you when something's swarmed in. It is, although it's um, uh, uh, only on the lower difficulties it becomes useful. Because on the higher difficulties, they're always after you. Yeah. Right? I'm going to let Max have a go. I, I, I mean, I, I think it's very playable. Um, so, yeah, it's quite controllable. Um, yeah, it's quite controllable. A um, little bit awkward, maybe. Um, it is quite nice in these kind of games. Um, you know, that whole kind of micro machine style racer. The actual feel of the car is quite important. And it is a little bit of a shame they haven't got things like skidding in there, they yeah. haven't got those kind of turns in there. Um, the sort of handbrake turns and stuff like that would be really yeah. nice. And also, even just in this little, in this little play, one of the things that, that, that we've all noticed that's kind of the most satisfying is when they, they destroy the, each other. So I do wonder whether having some obstacles in the arena that you might be able to use, um, although I suspect that would have made the AI of the, of the police a lot more difficult yeah. to, to do. But I think well, that would have made uh, quite a satisfying game, actually. The fact that they seem, the police seem to go a lot faster than you do seems a little bit interesting. Yes, because there's no... This is kind of what I mean about them. You know, There's no way to... If you could do a handbrake turn, for example, and, and quickly change direction or something, As you've got, uh, there might be a way of getting away with it. But, uh, yeah. So, sorry, I was playing. So what are they using to determine the difficulty then? Uh, hang on, let me just flip through this. Because as you say, there, there's kind of like, you know, there's a, you're either dead or you're not dead. So is it time that you, you're spending alive? Is it... <laughs> uh, so apparently the, the, the main solution was to give you the dummy life. To give you the chance to... Uh, right. Well, if you're a new player and you get hit at the default... Difficulty setting of five, you'll have about 30 seconds going from difficulties two, three, and four until you get to five again. Right. So, yeah, it looks like they considered a bunch of uh, different techniques. So, they mention, uh, uh, they mention sort of measuring the average score or the average time you stay alive per game. Yeah. But they say they explicitly didn't want to go for that because if, like now, we're switching from switching between players, it's difficult to sort of, yeah. sort of maintain that. But, yeah. They got one. <laughs> oh no, let's move away. <clears throat> but yeah, we yeah. actually go into a lot of detail about um, infinite strategy. It's also a li I, I, well, I, I, I think, lags a bit. I think the police also just seem to appear out of nowhere. Um, it might have been nice if there'd been a couple of spawn defined points, spawn yeah. points or something, and they could even have been the obstacles of the game, right? Been quite satisfying to try and distract them into smashing into their own police stations or whatever it would be. Um, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, it's it's surprisingly playable, isn't it? I mean, I, when you're watching it, it kind of... I, I think it probably looks unimpressive, but when you're playing it, it's fairly involving. Um, and it, yeah, it, it has a certain something. <laughs> so your, your strategy of looping seems to be doing quite well at does well sometimes. Causing chaos with them. Yeah. Uh, the explosions don't do well to handle. Don't know what happened there. So there's a there's a there's <clears throat> perhaps a little bit of an optimal strategy of doing it. But. So so let's get through let's go through the, the criteria then. So in terms of quality, um, uh, I, I, it's a little bit plain. I say it, um, it looks playable, but, but it looks like it could be a lot more polished. So, like you mentioned, just just adding a texture to the yeah, um, to and, the and, and, and I don't and I don't think it, means it takes an awful, would take an awful lot. But I think, um, but other than that, I think it's it, it's kind of very playable. It kind of uh, the controls work well. Um, uh, it, it kind of you know has a reasonable structure to it. It's got nice little feedback, like the, the police around the edges. Um, so uh, yeah, kind of simple. And I think perhaps a little bit more complexity to the to the mechanics, even by just having literally a spawn point in the arena, I think would have made it much more interesting um, that that the police could potentially hit. Uh, but uh, you know, sound controls all, all there, working well. So a reasonable, pretty reasonable game. Um, so what about the the, the, the so yeah the engine itself, the adaptive? So part. the novel yeah the novel component is obviously the adaptivity they've gone for. So you've been playing this for a little while now. Mm -hmm. it, does it feel like there's a big difference between difficulty two and difficulty six? Well, I assume 
my difficulty went up to 6, but I don't know if that changes during the game, because I can only go back to 5. You've got difficulty in the bottom right, which I think does tick up and bang. So I think it, it is... Yeah, over, over time it ticks yeah. up. And are they are they seem to be... What are they actually changing? It looks like it's just the spawn rate. Is it also the speed of the cars or anything like that? Or? Uh, I think it is just the spawn rate. So being able to maintain... Anything with the spawn rate is it increases the chance of them colliding with each other. And that's the thing. It almost feels... That's true. And the thing is... You actually really, really struggle to just outrun them because they're faster than you. So it almost feels like the more they spawn at once, the easier you have it, particularly because of the way they pack. Yeah. Could be, yeah. So again, I, I wonder whether. Um... And the thing is, it looks like the way the difficulty increases is only through how long you've managed to survive, and most of the adaptivity is then being able to just drop down in difficulty when you. That's true, yeah. So, so what about the what about the actual power ups, so like the speed ups, and the, are they presumably their frequency is also part of that difficulty process? Because uh, you because you haven't been getting any, um, and I think you do notice it. But then again, it's a problem because actually getting the bombs and destroying them is is a kind of core part of the fun of the game. Um, so yeah, so I. I I think that, me that the, the uh, adaptivity seems to work. I think it's... I, w I was perceiving it. I think I started off on five, dropped down to a two, went back up to five again. It was clearly easier to play. Oh, God, there's three now. Um, so I suppose I suppose when they die, they do perform obstacles, which you can then use. Mm. So there is that part to it. Um, but they just appear. an inherent mechanic of the game rather than... Well, but they've obviously chosen to leave to leave yes. the wreckage on the... On the, on the, on the the, uh, but it feels the like that's not necessarily having an impact in the difficulty level itself. No, in, no. or rather, it I, I think I'm not sure they're tracking it. As a, no, as a but, uh, but I think it's a, I think it's a, it's an interesting part of the dynamic of playing. Yeah. Because um, you can then try and direct other cars and things into that wreckage. Which I was trying to do. So. Well, the yeah. difficulty just gone up just then. Yeah, it's because I think the timer in the background is still it's going. Still going. <laughs> Hmm. So um, yeah, so in terms of the adaptive difficulty, it seems to be effective. It seems to work, um, but um, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's sort of so from reading the has um, from yeah. reading their game notes, I'm I'm still struggling to understand exactly what the system is doing. Okay, and it doesn't feel particularly complex. No, I think it's quite simple, but it does seem to it certainly seems to make a difference to the spawn rate. Um, I I think okay. that the I found I found another another page of their game notes. Here we go. Oh, okay. Here we go. So, uh, so the diff difficulty increases over time, uh, and it does affect the spawn rate of police cars and the power of spawn uh, yeah. slower. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So you get the dummy life as well. Uh, our game records adaptive difficulty by taking the difficulty level from the previous game when the player dies. So they have the option to either start from the previous difficulty yeah. or from the default. So yeah, it's not. I I, I like that as a as a what? as a method. Is that adaptivity? Um, well, presumably the, the, I mean, the difficulty the game gets harder as you go on, and then you can yeah. either start from where you left off, or yeah. start from scratch. Well, it's enabling you to play on the challenge. I think problem the, the problem I think comes in the next section, right? So, so that in terms of whether the adaptive difficulty works, they're clearly monitoring a number of stats. They're clearly changing things like the spawn rate um, of both the enemies and also the power ups. The problem comes from the interaction of all of those things. So, right? so the only time the difficulty drops is when you lose that dummy life. Oh, okay. So otherwise, it's always building them up. Yeah. Yeah. I, it gets really confusing when I just don't know where I'm looking. Just because there's nothing on the ground. Because there's nothing on the ground, yeah, that's a, that's a problem. <clears throat> so this, so you're thinking that the so the spawn rate... So the spawn rate and the power-up rate changes over time as you play, and it's according to that difficulty metric. But the only time it ever goes down is after you get killed. It seems to be that way. Yeah. So there, so oh wait, it went dropped. Did you just die then? Yeah, okay. I did touch something. Went down to two. Oh, so you lost your sort of half life. Um, <laughs> There's loads of power yeah. ups now. There is a lot of power ups, isn't there? 
I, for, for me, the problem is is not so much whether they're managing to to actually adapt anything, but about what the impact of that adaptation has on the game. So, in particular, the fact that actually that what makes the game interesting is um, kind of using the wreckage on the screen and by using the bombs on the screen, and both of those things are kind of linked to the difficulty level. Yep. Um, so the other and, thing, I, and so I'm not sure if that's consistent. So the other thing to bear in mind, the score as well is affected by the difficulty. So yes. you get one point per second if you're at level two. One yeah. point per second at level one, but you get ten points a second at level ten. So you're rewarded uh, okay. for being a high level. So you're right. Okay. So that's good. So so in terms of in terms of sort of um, the meaningfulness, they have linked your success in the game to the level of difficulty. So I think that's a that's a, a nice feature to do, and it means if you want to get a high score, you've got to get up to the high levels of difficulty and stay there. Um, <laughs> but again, that uh, yeah. So in terms of so going back to the the actual adaptive engine, then it, it feels that it, the question of when when it when the difficulty changes is the issue, right? So what what causes it to go up or go down? And this is the thing. I'm not sure it's directly tied to the player's actions, other than a losing that dummy life and yeah. b surviving for longer. Yeah, so it's, losing, it's, losing, losing the dummy life or your main life drops it down. So, again, there's ways they could have extended this in complexity. So, if we always destroy the police cars using the bombs, yeah. then they could spawn yes, less bombs, yeah. and so on, and so on, and so on. So, so when we were saying that the adaptive engine um, sort of, yeah, is, is a little bit simple, I think that that's absolutely right. Um, but again, I, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, because you know that's that's a kind of like I said a core fun part of the game. Um, it, it's more like what it should be doing is be saying, okay, well if you if the police cars are always colliding with one another, um, maybe there should be another type. You know, if there was another type of unit that didn't collide with the police, like a police helicopter or something that didn't yeah. collide with the police cars, you know, those those kind of things. I think one of the I I I, I, I think having a, a simple game is is fine. I think one of the problems of having a simple set of mechanics with, a, with adapt adaptation it's is that you've got, you've got less going. to yeah. adapt and less to play with, and I think that's what they're suffering from here a little bit. Um, but yeah, as a as a as a fun little game, I, I quite like it. But um, but clearly there, there's more places they could have done with the sophistication of the, the adaptation itself. Shall we move on? Yeah, that's... I'm almost at 10,000 points. Oh, yeah, you got there. You got there. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next game. Okay, so our next game is Word 4. Um, okay. So we've, we've managed to get this working with GL. There is something strange going on in that the there's no full screen option, but I think um, I think we can get it into so we can see the majority of the portrait. And that's that's a really nice effect. I really like that title screen. Type of block to start. Yes. So I played this in the expo, and I, I really like the fact that the, the mechanic, which is typing words in as they drop down, is what they use to. Oh, and to... you don't even have, have, so you don't have to type play. You've got this little sort of tutorial sandbox. Yeah. Space. So if we try help, let's try that. It clicked. Okay. And so it's all type words, destroy them. If you let them stack the top, it's game over. Okay, so there wasn't a, so there was some feedback into what you were typing because it was colouring in the blocks they on do, the yeah. screen. But it'd yeah. be nice if that showed up at the bottom as well. Yeah, so I can type in word and four. Yeah, but you can't type. But type I can't words. type. So if we if, let's, let's, if we try it out, so let's play type play. Yeah, you see plays lighting up. So oh yeah, <coughs> so the bottom one is used for that. Yeah. Okay. So I guess you don't need. That feedback so much when there's only these words. It's holding the streak. I thought I pushed that. So that's a special one. It was coloured. It's like it exploded. So there's a bar at the bottom that's measuring your difficulty as you're the going. Fact, the fact that they spawn in upside down makes it really difficult. Yeah. Uh, so so again, I played this in the expo. Um, the upside down words were absolutely killer. You um, seem to be doing alright though. Yeah, you're, you're, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that the difficulty isn't going up a bit faster, actually. It is creeping up. So it's going up... Why did it go up so much for that one? Was it a, a harder word, I guess? It's a longer. Uh, so I think the words get bigger. Um, 
I'm not sure whether they adjust the special thing that you get. Yeah, what is that? Ah, okay. Whether or not. Very nice. The hardest bit is adjusting to the Mac keyboard to type all the time. <laughs> yeah. Especially as it's a laptop keyboard, so the scale's different as well. It slightly burns your hands. Um, so, what I'm a bit unsure about is that you've been clearing everything. You're on a nine streak. But he's made some mistakes, which is why... So if you... If you okay. So the, the problem is if you if you mistype, then the difficulty goes down. Yeah. So it's dependent on your. Is that, is you lose your streak. How, How do you lose? Streak? Yeah. Uh, when the words fill up to the top, I think. But even so, you're doing quite well. I would expect the difficulty to be ramping up a bit faster than this. Yeah. So they say the words get faster and they get longer. I mean, they're getting faster. Not fast. super fast though. I mean, you're still only doing one at a time mostly. Yeah. Yeah. So again, when I played this, this was not how it went, right? I was doing relatively well to type them, um, but they were definitely starting to stack up. You're better at reading them upside down than I am. The difficulty also affects the spawn chance of the special blocks. Yeah. So, so when the difficulty is published. Config. So I presume they're getting the, the words from a from a, some sort of corpus. So it's interesting that the sort of explosion one threw the words back up to the top and yeah. that almost caused you to lose. Um, in terms of the game, it's, it's a really simple idea, but very, very effective. Um, So, so now so in the top half of difficulty now, you just say. So they said, um, so they've included the difficulty because we asked them to as part of the um, as part of the brief, but they said if they were going to submit this as an actual game, they wouldn't actually want to expose that information to the player. Yeah. They want to sort of, they want to keep it more. Um, so, so how does the scoring work? Um, presumably, you, you obviously, I presume you get more score for longer words, but I wonder if it's an exponential score. Uh, so the relationship between difficulty and skill is linear, and it's calculated through three variables with diff different ratings to scale the diffic difficulty of the game depending on the skill of the player. Uh, and then they've reproduced their code for that. So right. give me a couple of seconds to, <laughs> to, to parse the code. Okay. Now what I meant was um, I'm presuming that if you if you uh, Get rid of a word that's six letters, you get more score than if you get rid of a word that's five letters. Oh, I see. But is but is it just five score versus six score, or, or or do you get some kind of exponential effect? Because um, again, it, it feels like what you want to be doing is you want to be Give having more score for the longer having, words. Having yeah, probably a non-linear relationship, and mm -hmm. that way, the way to get a big score is to get it to high levels of difficulties and stay there for a long time. Um, um, and then it works quite well as a as a way of introducing new players to the game and, and finding the right level and those kind of things. Um, there we go. They start to stack up a bit now. Now you, you're up to the high levels of difficulty. But see, those explosions don't actually seem to be helping. They seem to be hindering. They are really annoying because they throw Eastern. stuff up above the red line. You do Eastern. That's in the middle. Let's see what happens. Ooh. See, it throws uh, them all apart. Yeah, but that's okay, because they... Oh, I think that's going to go game over. I think they have to come to rest. Mm. But what um, does the explosion do, other than throw everything up? How does that help? And they fell back down at a point when it was worse than if before the explosion. So, so can you go back to the help screen? Just I want to see what the special blocks actually do. Um, I just want to... You want to record that? You want to get your glory. <laughs> Hey, there I am. So it's actually a web high score. Okay, so the rotation is actually <coughs> tied to the difficulty. Right. So I guess the more likely, the, the better you're doing, the more likely you are to spawn upside down. Which, mm. <coughs> so yellow blocks explode, sending the blocks flying. Blue blocks that destroy everything that's touching when you type them. So blue blocks are the, how the useful ones. I think I, so I, I didn't see that many. 
I guess you were doing too well. They're kind of they're kind of chaos. They're not kind of chaos. Not what I needed. All right. So let's get this going again. So, okay. So let's do in terms of quality. It's very nicely polished. Yeah, it is. Except for the fact you can't type those three word blocks. <laughs> Scotland. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem buggy, or like the controls seem nope. like pretty responsive. You've got reasonable feedback as you're sort of typing out how it's going. You've got good feedback about the score and yep. the difficulty. I, there's not really a whole lot else to say about the quality. It's really nice. Yeah, it is nice. Um, uh, nice, simple use of sound as well. Um, the the movement of the blocks is is kind of. Quite pleasing. Is pleasing and um, kind of actually adds to the game as well. Uh, namely, um, we've said a couple of other things. You know, it's definitely playable. You could definitely get into this. And, so and I'm being quite cool by making you talk about this as your. Like... <laughs> yeah. I do find it weird how it's just so long. But yeah, the difficulty doesn't necessarily seem to ramp up as much as you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it just seems a bit slow. Um, in terms of the the uh, crystal, uh, so <laughs> like ah, what is that? What is I'm what turning is my head. Thumb Thumbzilla. Thumbzilla. How am I supposed to spot that upside down? That's cruel. <laughs> yeah, I mean the really? difficulty definitely seems to be having an impact. Yes. It does. It is. Uh, but I guess it's the case of. Yeah. Is it ramping up in the way in which we'd expect? Um, I, I, I think it, 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 although it seems quite slow, um, I, I think that might be at the beginning, you know, we're, we're eager to see the effect. I think actually when you're playing it, it, it feels relatively it feels natural. natural. Okay. Um, so like here, like I started off pretty well and I slowed right down. And it does, yeah, kind of a bit overwhelming. And there's there's also that prohibited. There is also that really nice um, uh, sort of sense of panic that that, that picks up. Oh, ah, oh. yeah. Uh, uh, and so the difficulty, effect, the difficulty affects the, the spawn rate, the gravity, the rotation, and the velocity of the blocks. Oh. It's interesting that they've gone for affecting the gravity and the velocity of the Yeah. Um, oops. Like. You see what I mean about those yellow blocks, though? Yeah. It keeps I, them sort of stuck on the. If uh, I could read it, I'd type it in and we'd see it. Subjects. Oh, I, I guess it can things. throw them back over the top of it. Yeah, it can. If, um, as in, so it, you only seem to lose when they're directly on that red line. So if the explosion throws them off of it, it gives you a little bit of a breather. So maybe it's yeah. straight. Yeah. But I think they sort of stacked all nicely there. And if it was to explode, that would have. Yeah. That would have fallen them down. I think we could play this one blindfolded and then someone else read it out. <laughs> yeah. If you, were, if, you were, if you were just looking at the, the board. Um, so let's go through. So quality, I think we said we've already gone through really. So yeah, very nice quality, very well polished. Um, brief. The adaptivity, like you say, perceptibly impacts the play. Yeah, it, it seems okay. I, mean, I said it, 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 it maybe is a bit slow, but I'm wondering about how much of that is just because we're playing it in a let's play and we want to see the effect quickly. Yeah. Um, it, it, it does seem to work quite well. Um, and in terms of, of how useful it is, I think um, the key thing is how it's linked to the score. Um, and that does seem to be something that I'm struggling to see where they've described it in the in um, the, the game notes yeah. that I landed in. So it, it yeah. looks... So I think it's mostly tied to the streak. Yeah, I, I, that, that seems to be it. Okay, so so the problem with that is as the game gets harder, it gets harder to get streaks. Well, yeah. You, you don't get any score for going fast. So Actually, it's I was like... going to say, do you, does it inherently make it harder to get a streak? Well, well other than panicking got... you into... 
Yeah. Typing faster. Well, you, you're trying to go faster. You've got more complicated words, and they're upside down, so they're true. They're, they're, you're more so likely it does to make it. Yeah. So I, I, I think it. Yeah. So so. Yeah, I, I think for in terms of in terms of um, that that kind of last part about how meaningful it is with the game and whether actually it helps the game or hinders the game, um, I think it does all come down to the way that scores are calculated, because um, I think that uh, you know a, a, a linear. I, I suppose the the other argument is if what, well, what what would it be like if you didn't have adaptive difficulty? You'd have linear difficulty. So the longer you play, the harder and harder the words would get. Um, but Again, you see that that would work fine because you, what happened is over a few minutes you'd ramp up to the high level of difficulty, mm. and then you'd stay there. So a good player would get up to would, would end up there and just spend longer there. But surely I can and play it, terrible and then go on for it longer. So yes, that's the problem. So if you play badly, are you, you just get gonna, easier words? Are you get easier words? Are you just going to accrue score? Uh, it's not obvious to me how that works here because uh, if the score's based on the streak, then. Your ability to get a streak is is sort of tied to yeah lower difficulty. Lower difficulty, yeah. Um, but 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 no, I I so I don't think it inherently harms the game or anything. I think it's 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 fine. Um, but, but if there was some more obvious that you got sort of like you say exponentially more points for longer words, yeah, yeah. then it's a lot easier to rack up that top score when you're on a harder difficulty. Yeah. And then you know you you want to try and get to that point, so you can then start to pick up those those big scores. Wait, so if I, um, I want to lose my. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, they're all landing upside down. It's not helpful. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be a, a, a fairly easy thing to put in here, but and even looking at the way that our scores are working, it's not clear to me that that is happening. It's a little bit difficult to actually tell. It is. How many points you're getting for each word? Yeah. But Particularly when you start getting streaks, because then I have to start doing. Yeah. Not, but again, it's not entirely. So I'm trying to lose words. my streak here every time I get a word. Just so I don't have to. Just to try and get less points, so you can stay at yeah. a lower difficulty. Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem, right? You end up gaming the system a little bit. Because you know you'll get more points that way. Oh come on! <laughs> Interracial destroyed. Uh, the, the, the huge tower. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose that is the other problem with this is because then that they are coming down using a using freefall as opposed to a kind of more controlled Tetris type fall. You you do get this situation where an unlucky bounce and a long word and all of a sudden you're above the line. Yeah. Um, it is, but you know, I, I part of me kind of likes that in a sense. Um, uh, I wonder whether I think you could have had some mechanics to get around that, some so kind of really disruptive, um, really disruptive stuff. You know, so like set a bomb off or something. You know, give you a special power up to, to get around those kind of problems. Going back to the overall <clears throat> quality again, just for a second, it's really nice that they've got a high school table in it, I, yes. and I assume that is like a live high school thing. It's either a live one or it's a fake local one that's recording us. Yeah. between sessions but but within the session but in any case I, I think it's nice to see and again um, it sort of really ties into the overall like that sort of core arcade yeah. feel of the game and, and and a really nice simple aesthetic as well kind of very clear you know big blocky words using that for the menu thing as well I think is inspired um, I think they've done a very nice job um, with just that slight question over the, re the relationship between the, uh, the adaptive difficulty and the scoring process um, yeah, good stuff. Should we should yeah, we move on? Move on to the next one. Okay, so at this point we are going to move across to the Unity, <coughs> Unity editor. So this was one we were we were asked um, to to try it um, away from the web, um, and this is Pro X Block Breaker. I think. So let's see how we go. Okay. Okay, so far so good. Here we go. So easy. So it's a, a, it looks a like breakout clone basically. Uh, oh, so. Mouse button doesn't do anything. Can it's you use arrow keys as well? There's no instructions. No, nope, it looks like it's purely, purely mouse control. So uh, other things. Oh, space. space. Space does it. Ooh, that seems quite fast. It does seem quite fast. Um, nice particle effects on the. Yep, yeah, I've turned the sound right down, but there are sound effects that we can hear at least. Okay, so I don't know what the difference between green and blue ones 
I'll put the red ones in to take a couple of extra uh, hits to break. Yeah. I'm curious what the adaptivity is going to be in this. Oops. Yeah. Presumably a key part of sort of these type of games is sort of. Oops. Well, you managed to fire that backwards. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of generating the level, so is it a case of levels are going to be generated? Uh, uh, ah, try again. With more like red blocks. Of course, we're going to have to actually get to the end of the level. Smash so. all the blocks and crown yourself the best. Oh, okay, oh. controls. Okay. So okay, we, we so sort of it, it, we, maybe that we see the menu. Okay, so controls. The, the, the puddle? The Pad puddle. The puddle. Looks like puddle to me. Yeah. Is moved by moving the eyes left or right. Uh, the okay, the mouse right. The ball is launched by pressing the space key. There are four types of bricks: blue, purple, red, and green. Blue and green brick is destroyed by one hit. The purple by two hits. I read by so three. So that doesn't say okay. key. It says hay. It's, the K is different. Yeah. It also says house, not my not mouse. But but <laughs> that's just the form. All right. Okay. So that that explains it. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> What's about? Oh, oh, okay. So this is not where we started. All right. So let's, so let's let's let's. So this, this one is still easy. Yeah. Wow. That. Yeah. Wait. Did you just? It's. No, you lost the life, so it didn't. It's actually. It feels like the collide is not quite the right size. It's quite hard to. It seems to be moving a bit just too fast. Yeah. It's it feels quite. It feels like the the, you lost the, the, life, the huh? paddle is small and the ball is small. It may just take me a while to get used to it. There you go. There we go. Oops. So you said there's some nice effects. I like the little background. Oops, in the back. Let's try again. Not as easy as you thought. Well, it was not easy, so I hoped it would be. Yeah, start crying yourself the best. Right, let's try. Right, if I don't move, so okay, this so is... on these breakout clones, there's 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 some interesting problems you get if you if you just rely on the physics engine, which is you get situations like this, for example, oops, like that, <laughs> like that. Um, or you get things like it goes backwards, and I'm wondering whether they're doing any monitoring of the ball motion. Um, sorry, I'm talking and not concentrating. That's the problem. Um, okay, so the adaptivity seems yeah. to mostly be a case of how many lives you've lost on a level. So if you if you manage to beat the first level without losing any lives, you skip about seven levels. Oh right. Sorry, if if you lose no life during the first two levels, you skip about seven levels and get to the harder level straight away. If you lose one life, you get a medium difficulty level, which skips two of the easy levels. And if you Two lives, okay, know. so basically, because right. so this, this seems interesting because if you lose two lives on the first level, you then have to go through fourteen levels to beat the game. Yeah. So you're being so you actually have to do more levels with only one life. Yes. You don't get and the lives back. I, well, well, so there's no score. So it's purely on progress. But playing the game. It's also is, is its own reward, right? I mean, the, the, the reason for playing is to play. It's because it's fun. So here, if I play well, I get to play less of the game. Yeah. And um, you get to play harder levels. Ooh. But yeah. you would be playing those anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I'm not even going to go through one level here. I mean, that's partly what adaptivity is about, right? Higher challenging giving higher skilled players a challenge, Oops. but you're right, because there's a finite number of levels, then they sort of miss out on content. If it was a case that they were being procedurally generated, then you could argue yeah. that yeah. they're not okay. But I mean, I mean, that's partly just because this is a prototype. You can imagine that in a full-scale one, they, they would have infinite levels. Yeah, and, and, and then the harder levels might be, like, that's true, they might be better. Um, yeah. Okay, so this looks like it's a consistent level, so I think we so ended... We, we, we must have gone into one of the easy levels by mistake, basically. Because we because we started the game, so their default scene in their project. Because um, I was going to say, it's interesting if the, they're not consistent. Because presumably you want us, yeah, you want to have sort of consistent progress through it, so you can sort of learn. And well, are we are we not going the same? Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I. So. So in terms of quality, 
Um, I think it, it, it looks quite nice. Um, the controls are really finicky. Um, and the, the, the paddle is the paddle is small, the ball is small, it feels really precise, and the whole thing's moving at a hell of a rate. Um, it doesn't really feel like you're playing on easy. So no we way. swapped over now, so Max has got the controls. So it's not just me, basically. <laughs> um, I'm not terrible at these type of games. Um, so, yeah, it, it's hard. It's a really hard, easy level, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, so I think I think that that's um, that's a problem, um, but you know the graphics are the graphics are neat enough. The controls um, uh, are, are pretty fluid. Um, there's some nice information on the screen. You've got your lives up there. Uh, it's pretty clear what's going on. The sound effects are good. So all of those things are, 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 are kind of working. Um, the problems for me all come about that adaptivity. I, I think having a, an adaptive engine where. <coughs> Yeah, you skip whole levels I, it is odd, although I do take your point that if they had a full game with hundreds of levels, it might make a bit more sense um, because then you're, you're getting onto the, challenge, the, the levels that challenge you quicker. Um, but like you say, when there's no score, there's no reward for doing that. No, other than... Kind of other than now, you, now it's gotten yeah. harder. So um, one of the things we sort of, we've talked about before is how do you map that... Like, okay, I, I'm a better player at this game. Yeah. You're giving me harder levels. What's my reward for that? Yeah. Um, I, 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 when I guess the idea is that it's the challenge, right? That you're going to get more fun after uh, in, in the process of being challenged. You're kind of, where they're thinking about trying to keep you in that flow. But the thing is, I, so I, don't, I don't play a lot of sort of breakout type games, but is, like, very fun. is the shape of the level something that sort of I mean, how much skill impacts, how much does the shape of the level impact the skill you require to complete it, I guess? I mean, it depends how near they are, down the bottom. Um, but, I mean, in general, the other thing is is that this is not doing things I would expect easy breakout levels to do. Yeah. So I'd, I'd expect it to have kind of um, uh, kind of areas where the ball gets in and then it bangs about and destroys loads of blocks I mean, all at once. It did or... sort of do that a little bit just now, but yeah, the, the sort of shape of this very first level does not oh. seem to be yeah. particularly easy. That was a good save. <laughs> yeah. You're so, think, so you're going to beat this with three levels remaining, which means you're going to skip the next seven <sighs> levels. And then we're going to leave straight away. This kind of... oh. oh! No. Unlucky. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I think that... So, so the, the the question is, why did they not adapt within the level? So, right. like, either with sort of some small power ups, like yeah. there's changing I mean, the size of the paddle, changing the speed. of I the mean, board. games like this always, almost always, have some kind of descending power ups <sighs> that gives you also gives you something else to do, right? Yeah. Because one of the problems with these types of clones is that they um, you spend a lot of the time with the ball bouncing around the top of the screen and not a lot to actually get on with. <laughs> right? It's also quite difficult to aim, so you end up. Yeah, well, I mean that's part of the problem of the of, of having this kind of very small paddle and very small ball as well. Because really? not only does it make it inherently slightly more difficult, it means that the things that are actually quite satisfying about this, which is aiming the ball or hitting the ball at just the right speed, and you don't get um, your levels, you don't get your lives back. No, <laughs> so, so, so you can't skip. So really. if you're a lower skilled player, you are locked into the you are locked into doing fourteen levels, yeah. full levels with just one life. Yeah. Yeah. That seems a problem of balance. Yeah, I, I, so I, I kind of see what they're trying to do, which is they're trying to say, look, okay, because there is no score, they're just saying you're playing the game on, on the right level. So You've I guess demonstrated you're... that you are an easy level player. Here are the easy levels. Okay. Your, your score is what level did you get to, basically. Yeah. So I guess essentially and now you, start again? you get a bonus. <laughs> the yeah. thing is, it also says it's only inherent on the first two levels. Right. So after, I mean, because because at that point, obviously, you've lost the lives or not. Yeah. So. So okay. So I think we've we've sort of covered up quality. I think it's a perfectly reasonable quality, although the, the controls could be a bit more refined. I think. Um, and actually, there is a problem with complexity a little bit in that it would have been nice to have something else going on mechanically. Again, it goes back to the idea of if, if you have a very simple game with not a lot to adapt, it, it actually yeah, makes the adaptation it. quite hard. Having, having so, a simple game of this type is sort of fine, but the problem is it gives you much fewer tools in your toolbox yeah. to sort of 
to so, make use of that adaptation. So just just one or two other elements I think might have been helpful. Um, but otherwise the quality I think is perfectly reasonable. And in terms of the adaptive kind of engine, um, we've not actually seen it work um, because we because easy isn't actually that easy. Um, so you know why isn't easy just a, a small collection of box at the beginning? You know, why, yeah. why if they're going to do the adaptation on the level? It's like level, can, can you beat this level? Here's, here's a really simple level with a couple of blocks on it to, to get and, and actually have a bit more variety in the difficulty. Um, it, it means we've not actually seen the medium or hard levels, so it's difficult to know what they're what they're like. Um, and I actually struggled there to see it because when they were exploding, they released some like particle effects. I yeah. didn't know which one was the ball. So I just kind of think, you know, it, 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 there are there are so many types of power ups that would make that would make adaptation on this really interesting, right? Like, you know, like the, a wider like, like the wider paddle, like multiple balls, like kind of explosive balls that destroy, you know, and the thing multiple is that, blocks. Like even um, in a fairly simple game like this, there yeah. are things you could model. Like, does the player consistently just miss the ball? Yeah. In which case, drop yeah. them a power up that makes the paddle slightly. Well, or, or, or are they, or are they surviving but missing the blocks, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so you get this thing in these games quite often when you get to the end of the levels where you've got one or two blocks left, right? And um, you have to actually then start directing the ball in a particular direction. So you could, you know, you can monitor how long are they in that state. Get start giving them tools to enable them to, to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So they don't get kind of bored with the ball bouncing around the screen and they they, they get a chance of actually directing it. Um, so, um, so in terms of meaningfulness, it's it's kind of tied up with the with the actual implementation. Um, I think this this type of game is the sort of game where adaptation could be really good, but not I think at the level. I think at the in terms of the play, in terms of mm. um, the mechanics in the, in the in the game itself. And if you are going to do it at the level, you have to have probably more granular levels, so lots of smaller levels, which kind of yeah. More obvious differences between them, perhaps. I feel like a lot more lives would have made it easier. Yeah, certainly refreshing <coughs> your lives at the start of each level seems like it would be. Yeah, a sensible thing. Because even then, if you want to just base your adaptive difficulty on yeah. how many lives did they lose in this level, yeah, I mean, then you've only got two chances to sort of model something about the player before. Yeah. yeah. So I think this is the this is a game with with kind of a lot of potential, but they've. Not they've, fully realised it, but they've not fully realised it, and they've done the adaptation at, at slightly the wrong place, I think. But, um, okay, should we should we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Okay. So our next game is called Chess Tris. Chess Tris. Chess, chess, chess. chess meets Tess Tris. Um, which is kind of an interesting concept. Okay, so so I'm gonna uh, so Max is playing this. Um, so basically, we we don't have a controller, so we're gonna have to to, to use the keys. Um, which is kind of a shame because it means that their nice little tutorial on the bottom left doesn't isn't applying to us. I'm sorry. Um, so basically, uh, Q and E will rotate the view. Um, that's the that's the equivalent of the triggers at the back. And um, the cursor keys will move your chess piece around the board, but you have to move diagonally. So you have to press up and left or up and right together, because it's designed to use the, the to, to use. I'm the, not sure what's happening at the moment. So that's the thing. They they have a, a nice little tutorial sort of explaining the controls that fades away when you yeah. use each of those, but they haven't really explained the concept of the game. Yeah. I have no idea what's going so on. So it, it took me a long time in the expo to actually figure out what was going on. Um, so essentially these blocks are falling. There's a little shadow that shows you where the blocks are falling down. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, you can push them around. Um, so not on the edges, edges obviously, but you can, you can push them and you can climb on top of them. Um, if not you... Bad. If you uh, change the viewpoint so you can actually move around like this, what I found really confusing was that it changes around the entire game. So all you're doing is moving your view. So if a block is falling in a particular place, it's always going to fall in that particular place. So the only controls you have are pushing blocks around and climbing on top of blocks. Right? I'm not entirely sure when a level gets clear. I, I think it's when you get a row. No, we've had some that have been like L shapes. That's but I think it, yeah, but I think when you get a row, it wipes out everything on that level. Oh, okay. Yeah. Row that. I think. Oh, that's be a row four now. Go on nine blocks per layer. See, this is the, do you just have to have nine blocks on a single layer? Is that what it? Oh, means? It may, maybe it is. Yeah. But 
but it, it really is difficult to, uh, and, you, and you can get stuck, obviously, so you kind of... I can't actually do anything. That's the thing, you can't actually move any of these blocks right now. <clears throat> no. Well, and it's just getting bigger now. Oh, you go around the outside. But now you need 14 blocks on a layer. Yeah. Oh, and you had a max, max block height. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought... Oh, that was a height, oh, height thought, zero, max four. I thought that was like a high score. So you can also get crushed. So maybe if you... There you go. So if you move those to the edges, maybe... Um, See, the problem is there's not really a lot of. It's really difficult to actually move those into the line. So, so, you, they are. so you need so four, four blocks, blocks on a layer. layer. There okay. you go. Okay. So, so, so that's what you're trying to do. So you essentially need to climb up and push stuff off. And you can climb up and push stuff off. Yeah. Um, so it takes it takes a while to figure out what on earth's going on. Um, the problem is your agency over this game seems a little bit limited. Well, it seems difficult to engineer a situation where you can. Push this I, block off. I, so you need to push this yeah. block off, right? To make a but we can't because it's you in the can't corner. in the corner. It's true. That's I'm true. Flying. So I think I think the problem actually is to do with expectation. I think the problem is this is called Chestris, and it is neither chess nor Tetris, right? Um, and the problem is is you come to it with those kind of models in mind, and then you feel like your your agency is quite lacking because you can't do any of the things that you expect to be able to do. But in actual but, fact, if you take the game on its own terms... I mean, yeah, but for yeah. example, right now, we just got a, a layer of eight. Yeah, but you can move, three, so you can move those three to the side, right? So it makes sense to move those to the side, I think. And you press those, there you go. So. Okay, so they all go at once. That was bad. They all go at once. And right? see, now we've got... Yeah, So, the, but, but then this is what I mean about... In Tetris, you can change where they land, right? And when I saw this game, I, mean, I was playing on a controller, and I was using the, I was using the paddles like mad to spin around. Thinking that when something landed, I could spin it round and it would change where it landed. See, that kind of reminds me of Fez, which is really cool because it does that. But you get, you get, you get crushed. But so again, it's just a, it's more a case of just avoiding the stuff as it falls. <clears throat> oh, the fact the stuff from the, uh, the top layer. But, also, do but also trying to push stuff into holes, right? So as it builds up and you get that more complex three dimensional layout, you're then trying to push stuff. But the thing is, like like I said, we're not in a situation where we've ever needed to do that because all of no. the blocks currently falling are falling on the layer we want them to. So there's nothing yes. for us to do. Yes, that is, that is definitely a weakness. Um, uh, and we've got kind of seem quite simple blocks. Presumably we, we've been doing badly. So this is where uh, let me have a quick read through of uh, the notes and we'll find out what the innovation they're going for. So it's a combination of procedural generation and adaptive difficulty, which is something we yeah. often see overlapped. Uh, well, so, so, so interestingly, now, now the difficulty has gone down, you are playing it much more effectively. Like you're moving blocks around. You're. Yeah, but I don't feel like I have to. It's more just killing. Time no, but you. A minute ago you did, right? So a minute ago you deliberately moved something out of the way, and you pushed something down onto a low level to create the to, to create the to the number of blocks on that layer. Um, so again, I I think this might be another example of it if it starts off at the wrong difficulty that you're kind of. Like, well, this is a big. So I think player movement affects the difficulty, but they don't mention exactly how. Mm. So player movement, row completion, and time elapsed progressively yeah. increase the difficulty. So if you stay still, so if you move lots, it gets harder. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's try. But again, the idea that time to completion affects the difficulty. Because of the way they're generating stuff, I'm not sure that's actually a good measure to do it. Because we're kind of reliant on the procedural generation. See, like this one, we can't push this off because it's because of the place it spawned. And yeah. now we can't move it at all because it's there. And something's spawning directly on top of it. Again, meaning A, we can't climb up there anymore. And yeah. B, we couldn't move it even if we could. I, I wonder if we had um, a path around the edge of the board where blocks never fell and you couldn't push them onto it. I feel maybe like if it well, went smaller, it would be harder, not the other way around. Maybe. Yeah. To yes, to a certain extent, because you've got less flexibility. <clears throat> I wonder whether that uh, whether that would help a path around the edge. The other thing that's a yeah. bit weird is when you when you get up to the second layer, you can push stuff off, so gravity yeah. affects it then. But it's unclear to me why gravity isn't affecting these ones right now. Um, because I think there's one thing that's under them, that red one on the corner. But yeah. now I can't. I guess I can paddle. Turn around to see, but the. 
I, I didn't find that I didn't find that rotation helpful. No. Um, <clears throat> so so okay. I, like, so I, can, I can definitely see what they were trying to achieve with this. I was just so the adaptive difficulty is based on those factors, and it changes what it makes the uh, it increases the difficulty. I mean, so everything keeps out exactly what variables that affects. And then in terms of the procedural generation, I presume that means that they're talking about the blocks that are falling. So they say the maximum walk length of each falling tile piece. So you can push that underneath there, look. That red one. Oh, there you go. Uh, this, the probability of singular blocks appearing. So obviously we're, we're operating at a lower difficulty now because we're getting nothing yeah. but single blocks. Uh, the speed at which blocks fall. And it, the delay between the drop of pieces. Uh, and so, the goal number of pieces to complete a layer. Yeah. And the I mean, maximum height. I mean, I think the idea is is that <clears throat> you, you see where blocks are falling and then you manoeuvre other blocks to take advantage of where they're going. But the re the reality is is that it's almost impossible to do that. I've no idea what I'm doing now. I think part of the problem is I, I guess some of these blocks are like sort of linked together in blocks. Yeah. But it's not really clear, particularly when they start stacking up. So it'd actually be nice if, when a block of three falls, it was almost like a solid block of three, and then we could see, oh, okay, this one has to be moved all together. Yeah, I, I, I just true. jumped. I'm getting a little confused because of all the layers. But sometimes well, I can walk through. So one thing I do think works really nicely is that the blocks, the colour, so like the, the, the blocks are piece. the blocks are essentially coloured blocks and trying to transparent block, right? Um, and I do actually think that works quite well. I think if these were just solid blocks, it'd be very hard to see what was going on. But the problem is this, the transparent blocks around the outside are also, um, it's not clear which ones are joined together. No, no, I, th I so, think you're right. I think, I so think a moment it, ago we moved an entire L piece yeah. as well. And, I, and, I, and I, I agree with you. I think, I think if, they were, if that was at a solid L... And the problem is when you get sort of those blue blocks and some other blue blocks, it becomes very, very unclear which ones can be moved as yes, a group. Yes, that's true. And when your entire thing is sort of spatial reasoning, then knowing what what you yeah. will move when you bump into it's kind of crucial. Yeah. You're surviving quite a while for how messy the screen's gone, though. <laughs> no idea what's happening. I think you're about. Oh, yeah. Well, max you made it to the top. So I think one of the things is you need to get on top of it so you can start pushing stuff down. But I can't because there's a gap here. And the and the problem is obviously once <laughs> like just like can Tetris, you, can right? you when go you, the back? when you've got that gap at the bottom around here. Though. No, you so you need 36 blocks on a layer. It's just going up and I haven't met the target. And I'm moving around now so it's getting harder. I'm just going to cry in the middle. Oh, I'm doing it, something. It, it's got that problem of, in Tetris when you sort of just miss a row and it gets blocked off. Yeah. Then you're kind of in trouble because it's going to be very difficult for but now to I'm move like, any of these down. Oh god, that lagged. But you can, but you can, yeah, I mean you can recover from that though. But it's harder to um, see when I'm stuck in the middle. So okay, so let's go through them. So in terms of quality, in terms um, of quality, it's it looks quite nice. Yeah, it looks attractive. Um, I almost wonder whether they got a bit caught, caught up in that actually, um, and they've got this really interesting complex thing on the screen. Um, but some of those choices make, as you say, make it a bit more difficult to play. But it looks nice. Um, it, it the structure of the game was works fine. So the bots are definitely um, falling faster. Now. Yeah, it's but the thing is, it's not it's not easy to tie that to. So, for example, the max height keeps going up, and I don't know what it is that we're doing that's affecting. No, that. I don't know what I'm doing that's making anything go beyond what we did in the first round. So, so in terms of the, the raw quality, I think kind of um, Ashley's got some nice features to it, although they've made some choices that make it more difficult to see what's going on. Um, in terms of the the procedural generation and the adaptation. So this is interesting. Sorry, just going back to, yeah, some of the way they're generating this stuff. I assume they're adding like more space on the board to make it harder because then yeah. you have to fill that thing. But actually, you end up spawning more stuff in those spots. So actually, you get sort of a respite because we're now on like the max level. See, I'm layer. lost now. Yeah. If anything falls at the top, we're doomed. Yeah. But because they've just added a whole bunch more empty space, stuff seems to be prioritizing yeah. that. So we're actually not doing a lot. And still managing to survive. I'm yes. struggling to see myself. It, 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 it's just too chaotic, isn't it? I think it's kind of. Um, okay, so so in terms of procedural generation and, uh, and the adaptivity, the procedural generation 
Uh, I suppose they're, they're linked together, really, aren't they? Because it's just generating the types of the blocks. So really, it's an adaptive difficulty piece. Um, so in terms of procedural generation, the Tetris pieces are generated using a, modif a modified version of the Drunk Walk algorithm, right. uh, which takes an array of available tiles to create the pieces from, and then starts putting them at random to actually score them. In. Okay. So I didn't have enough time to read that. I just went blurry. Yeah. Normally, normally the background goes blurry, <laughs> not the text. Yeah. Um, they blurred their text layer. They should have done. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it it, it is clearly um, uh, it, it is clearly changing, but again, how meaningful is that change? So, uh, and 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 I and I the. They, these are tied together, right? So because the game feels slightly chaotic and you don't feel fully in control of what's going on, the adaptation then feels slightly chaotic and you don't feel quite in control of what's going on, right? They, they've also tried to argue that they used a novel interface because they have a controller. I'm not sure you can argue that a controller is a novel interface. No, no, I mean, it's been I, used I for nearly of... forty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, it is unusual. In, you know, most of our games, um, most of our games, do our keyboard mouse games. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't. I wouldn't count that as a novel interface. I think this is clearly an adaptive difficulty game. Um, I think the focus is definitely on the adaptivity. Uh, yeah. So, so that chaotic nature makes it quite hard to 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 see what's going on. Um, but it is clearly adapting. Things are clearly changing. I think the problem we have is it's arguable about whether or not it actually makes it harder. Um, and in terms of whether it's meaningful or appropriate for this type of game, um, I'm not quite sure what we're trying to achieve here. There's no score, is there? So again, I think similar to previous games, it's a case of just sort of how long did you survive, how many levels did you get through, but there's not really an indication of when we swapped from one to another. No. I don't really get how the goal goes up. So I think that's, again, it's sort of just interpolated based on the difficulty. So I think, uh, so they calculate a difficulty based on those variables they were tracking, and then that affects... I, so it feels to me like previous uh, games that we've seen before where they, they sort of calculate a difficulty level based yeah. on some things, and then that difficulty level affects everything else, rather than sort of tying it from one to the other. But I don't yeah. think I was doing any like any good, and then the goal kept going up, so it just kept getting harder for me, and I clearly wasn't doing anything No, that's what I mean, decent. like a chaotic nature. You, you had a bit <laughs> on the last game where you were surviving by just by chance. Mm. I, think that's, that, I think that's the problem they have. It's... It, like it looked like it got to a stage where it was definitely unwinnable, but we carried on for about yeah. a couple of minutes past yeah. that point. And also, do the colours mean actually anything? No, I, don't think I, I think they're just there to help distinguish the, the blocks. Um, I mean, I kind of, I, I, I do like what they're trying to do. I think there, there, there is something interesting in what they've got here. Um, I think they, they're suffering from kind of mixed metaphors and not quite knowing what they want to try to make the core. Uh, I mean, well, well, I'm not quite sure what they want to do. With the mechanics of the game. That's it. The core dynamics clear. The core dynamics definitely clear. spatial reasoning. If it's the way, but it's do the mechanics sort of. Yeah, how blend. the mechanics fit together to make that all work. I think I think that that is a bit loose. So I think so. Um, they say then, one of the highest things mm -hmm. they weight in terms of difficulty is when you complete a row. Right. But a lot of the time, that just seems to happen through chance. Yeah. Um, and, and again, like I said, you know, you, when you're at this, presumably this lower level of difficulty here, you've got single blocks. This is when you start to learn. This is where you start to learn to play the game, and you can start playing a bit more strategically because you can move blocks around. Um, as soon as you start getting the bigger blocks, it, you, you you start losing control of the situation very very rapidly. Mm. Um, so so again, I, I actually That's wonder true. whether it's the difficulty curve is wrong, right? Um, and actually, if they ramped it back. Um, there could be something quite satisfying about actually starting off and arranging. So, so, so just then you did seem to be sort of yeah, like organising the board. You were and playing and organising stuff. And then if, if they've started bringing in a couple of blocks that are in sets of two. Right? That's yeah. the thing. It, it very quickly spirals out of control Yeah. if you start losing, I think. 
And the problem is you start off in that position, right? So you start off in that kind of chaotic state. Um, and I think that's that's part of the problem. So so I think I mean my personal feeling is this this um, this has, has is a game with some interesting potential. Um, but I think the, the 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 difficulty is. Do you ever get to play as another chess piece? Chess piece. So that's, that's the thing. I'm not sure where the chess metaphor comes in, other than just yeah, I you're, think you're that, on a grid. Yeah, that's 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 it's part of the mix metaphor. It's more like three D Tetris than. It, yeah, it's kind of. I guess I guess the fact that you have a thing that's pushing stuff along the board rather than. Rather than like you say, sort of being able to switch it in midair. Yeah, but even so, you know. Chess pieces not known for pushing each other around. Right? Yeah. So. Okay, we should we should probably move on. Was that was that our that was final game? One. So okay, um, so uh, that's our last game. So we'll be back soon with another video. And um, thank you very much for watching.